Occupy London thanks the Ontario Ombudsman for his report regarding London City Council's in-camera meeting on the night of November 8th, but would like to highlight that the report is limited in scope and based on a, on a redacted account of events. The Ombudsman's report finds only that the Council's use of an in-camera session was appropriate. The report renders no opinion on whether the eviction of Occupy London the Occupy London encampment was handled in a fair way, nor whether municipal bylaws supersede the Canadian Charter of Rights in this matter. As such, Occupy London does not believe that the Corporation of the City of London has been vindicated in their actions on the night of the eviction and in the subsequent handling of confiscated property. On the night of the eviction, a number of items were confiscated by the Corporation of the City of London. Weeks later, Occupy London members were advised of a process to which to retrieve items in possession of the city. This process involved the specific identification of items and the signature of a waive, waiver declaration effectively incriminating the claimant and absolving the city of responsibility for lost and damaged items. In addition, Occupy London's recorded inventory of items was one of the items confiscated. Occupy London has requested that all items be released to the care of Occupy London's fin Finance Committee, which the City has declined. Further requests for items after this point have gone largely unanswered, and the status of seized property is unknown at this time. Yes, sir. As concerned members of the community, Occupy London reiterates our commitment to encouraging democratic participation, opposing injustice, and building strong communities. In the coming weeks, we will continue to highlight and educate the public about important issues and work to assist others in improving their communities. By partnering, by partnering with people in neighbourhoods of London, we will seek to cultivate working relationships and cohesive local communities. Through our network assembly, working group, we aim to encourage citizen engagement and democratic participation at the grassroots level. In spreading democratic self-governance in our city, Occupy London hopes to build a positive future through shared effort. Occupy London invites you, the people of London, to take part in what comes next. As spring unfolds, democracy will rise. On May 1st, 2012, a global general strike will show what a world without the 99% might look like. Our committees, work groups, and General Assembly meet regularly and welcome your input. Find your voice, share your talent, together we can make it. I'd like to add one more thing to this statement. Occupy London has never at any time behaved violently or engaged in actions that have been a threat to anyone, yet something as simple as showing up for a press conference and we have our usual accompaniment of the London City Police. We have students who riot and destroy vans, we have people dealing drugs just up the road. We have people probably in this park at this moment smoking drugs. However, us just coming to talk to you, the press, and we have an accompaniment of police officers, which really highlights how important what we're saying is. There'd be no point in setting the police on us if what we were saying was just hot air. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, what are you planning for the spring? Are you going to reoccupy the park? There's no current plans to reoccupy the park, although that's always a possibility. Uh, the main focus, as was outlined, is to reach out to the community. We think the ideas that we're talking about are contagious and that people are eager to hear about alternative ways of doing things and increase democracy, that they're not happy with the traditional political institutions that are available to us and that we're, we're really supplying an alternative that people are, uh, are really needing. And why? Why do you guys want to reoccupy? Well, the point was never to sleep in a park, you know, leave your warm bed and live in a tent in October. It was a point of gathering a community, starting a dialogue, um, building awareness, and I think we effectively did that. Um, if we were taken down violently, it would be necessary for us to continue to occupy because we would have to say, no, you can hurt us, but you can't silence us. But because we weren't, we've been free to spend the winter time continuing what we already started, uh, building committees and work groups and planning and highlighting and awareness and information. What are some of the ways that you're planning on engaging the public? We've been working on a lot of literature. Um, we've got ongoing rallies. As I said, we do have committees and GAs going ongoing and have been all winter. Um, we will be moving outdoors again. 
Um, we'll probably have a few rallies. And, and again, we also have a series of public events regularly, sometimes at the East Village Arts Co-op down at 757 Dundas East, sometimes at the public library. Now that the weather's so nice, I mean, the whole uh, schedule has been really moved forward. We weren't expecting it to be like this right now. Pretty sure we were in snow last year at this time still. So uh, we'll probably come out and engage the public downtown and in the park, you know, uh, talk to people like we were when we were in here. It was one of the best moves we had, and I could see a lot of that happening again. But really, we want to educate ourselves, we want to educate the public, we want to engage with people. We think that's the, the biggest point about participatory democracy, is people engaging in their own interests. You're talking about the event on May 1st, are you guys all planning on that point, or can you tell me about Yeah, well, there's been, a, I mean, May Day is a traditional militant Labor Day to begin with. It just largely gets ignored in North America. And so this year there's a real push to revive it and there's a call out for a general strike. And if we can't have a strike of our own, we're encouraging people to not go to work, to not go consume, to not participate in the system for one day. Maybe come down and join us for a rally. I mean, uh, it's, re it's really... Sorry? I'm pretty sure there will be a rally in this park right near where we're standing on May 1st. We also recently had a rally relating to the election fraud, which is an important issue. Um, an illegitimate government is a concern, especially when they're really rushing through a lot of draconian laws um, with a question of the mandate. Do you think that some of the issues that are going to be talked about by Occupy activists, are the scope of them is going to be uh, expanded? Um, certainly, I, I would say be expanded. I'd say they already are expanded. Is expansive. <laughs> There's a lot of things to cut. Anthony, let me ask you, uh, you can defer to someone else if you'd like, but would there have been any finding from the Ombudsman that was acceptable to the, the group other than uh, finding for uh, the, the City Council had done something wrong? Would there have been any other finding that he could find? Well, I mean, I didn't really, uh, honestly, I wasn't expecting much of it, so I leafed through it pretty quickly, and uh, it was pretty close to what I was expecting, but I'd say... Just in glancing at it, I thought his assessment of us was fairly accurate, that we're part of a, a large global movement that seems to be awfully effective and seems to be a gauge of the general public to an extent, and that they better take us seriously one way or another. So that part of it I thought was pretty accurate. The rest was sort of uh, what I would have expected. I mean, he's part of the system too, and he's not going to go against that, I wouldn't think. But he's part of the system, but you certainly didn't mind using him to file a complaint with. I didn't file a complaint, but yeah. But Occupy, the, the Occupy the tax-paying oh. citizens yeah, of this I'm, country. Right, I'm still... We do have a right to access the services we pay for. We may highlight that the money we're spending is not going where we would hope it, to like hospitals and support systems, but instead going to give fat subsidies to big corporations and big pensions to government. But that doesn't mean that we absolutely negate our own right to access the services we pay for. Right. Um, I'd like to also highlight that Occupy London is the only Occupy in all of Canada that was taken down without court injunction, and just because the ombudsman, without full Im information, didn't find anything wrong with them meeting in private does not mean that they were right in what they did, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's over either. And at the time, we tried to tell people we considered the Charter as over municipal bylaws, and I'd say that's still largely our stance, that, you, that their claim the really wasn't happy with it. It just says that they abided by their letter of the law. Yeah, it was a pretty narrow investigation. It specifically says that they abided by the laws that they passed and that yeah. they're still not happy about it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting to me they use the term lawyer-client privilege. I asked, you think, so I'm wondering who their client is and we're protecting and hiding information from when removing that information from the public record. Questions? Thank you all very much for coming. <laughs> expect more of us coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can expect to see you again soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, Mike, check! I say democracy, you say now! Democracy! Now! Democracy! Now! I say democracy, you say now! Democracy! Now! Democracy! Now! Good job. Let me know. Alright, first thing. I never win anything.
Yeah, see you, buddy. No, I don't want to call. Oh, I'm going to be Someone on.